this information should I ever need it because I don't know it? Well, there's only one answer to that. I can do that. This is not what you asked for. You asked me to bring you a can of soda, not give you a pictorial report on gallery counts. Why don't you listen to me? This is why I'm frustrated with you. You never listen to me. Well, at that point, there's only one thing to say. <laughs> this is a true story. It wasn't soda, it was component parts for security system. This is what you're up against and this is what you will end up with. Doot doot, all aboard the fail boat. Be prepared for this. Don't lose your cool. Understand, this is what I said by losing gracefully and winning by being a sneaky bastard. If you have good management, your manager, like my contract master here, Charles Rawls, shut up, get it done, failure is not an option. Now that sounds a little brunt and harsh, doesn't it? But you know, what else is being communicated in that statement? I trust you. I know you know your job. Get out of my damn office and do it. This is the difference. Because when you get management like this, you have their trust, you have their loyalty, you have their support, and they at least half believe you know what you're doing. And as a bonus, they usually take you out to dinner. That is dealing with management. Understand, you are in a position of trust and responsibility. The future of the company is in your hands. The future of your career is in your hands. Treat the job, the people, and everyone involved with respect. You'll get it back, mostly. Mistakes are inevitable. Learning from them is expected. Not repeating them is mandatory. These are absolute golden rules. Keep them in mind. You will be given the opportunity to snatch failure from the jaws of victory. Don't do it. Remember the golden rule. Whoever makes the gold, whoever has the gold, makes the rules. When you're dealing with the management, they are in charge. Their requirements what they need, not what you think is best. Remember the chain of command. That's the chain you will be beaten with until you realize who is in command. And also accept that you may be in a situation where the management is right until proven less right, and only you are capable of being proven wrong. It is really hard to accept that, but you need to if you're going to deal with high-level management. You may end up working for people who are unpopular, unethical, people you don't like, people who don't like you. You might end up working for Microsoft. What do you do in a situation like this? You've got to work for this guy. What do you do? There's only one thing you can do. Be a rock star. Even Elvis could shake hands with Nixon. Understand what you need to do to get your job done and to make the boss happy without compromising yourself and without compromising the company. Don't get angry. Don't get frustrated. Don't, oh, screw you and walk out the door because that stuff will follow you. When you find success, you have something like this. I'm walking down the hallway and the CEO has a visitor. Visitor says, hey, this system's really nice. Whoever did this knew what the hell they were doing. CEO never had a bad thing to say about me ever again after that incident. The proof is in your work. Make it look good. Vendors. There are a lot of vendors out there you have to deal with in order to put together a security system. So, first thing you need to do is understand vendors. About vendors, they provide the cool toys, they let you play with the toys, they know the history of the equipment. The bad side is they expect you to buy it. I love vendor samples. You get to play with some really neat toys. First thing you need to do is go buy this book. Every vendor I've ever known in one way or another follows the Ferengi rules of acquisition without exception. They may not know it, but they do. Don't try to rub their earlobes, but read the book. <laughs> Rule number one, there are many, 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 many vendors out there. Don't get locked into one. Don't be persuaded into only dealing with one vendors. There are a lot of vendors out there. Rule number two, 
You don't always need the latest, greatest thing that just came off the assembly line. They will try to sell this to you. You don't always need it. Rule number three, always deal with vendors between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. You know why? That's right, they will be forced to buy you lunch. Also, before 11, vendors are drinking their coffee, hating their morning ride. Yeah, yeah, I'll get back to you later today. After two, they just wanna hit the golf course. They wanna go home. I'll talk to you about that tomorrow. Between 11 and two, they have no excuse not to give you your answer. What's the easiest way to remember that? 11, two, victory. Here's the reality of the situation. Management has requirements for the security system. Those requirements are passed to you. You create an RFQ request for quote. And eventually, the vendor gets around, and, 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 and you get your quote. The quote goes to management. Management either approves it or denies it. And then you start the whole game over again if they deny it. I want more. I want less. Less money, more product. And you go through this circle again and again and again. This may remind you of your favorite punk group. However, you have to do it. So, never rely on a single vendor. Multiple quotes always. Do not get caught in vendor wars. I'll, I'll beat his price. You're dealing with Bill? Bill's an asshole. I'll give you a better price. Now, wait a minute. Steve here. Steve's too busy playing golf. I'll take care of you. You come over here with me. Don't get involved in that crap. Make it professional, keep it professional. Ensure the vendor is knowledgeable. A lot of vendors have a lot of products. They have 50 feet of catalogs on their wall. They don't know a damn thing about any product in them. Oh, you want a left-handed spanner? Sure, we specialize in those. Ah, uh, comes in blue, pink, and graphite. Oh, they're the best, I've used them myself. Vendor didn't know there was no such thing as a left-handed spanner. Make sure they know their products. A lot of people just have a catalog they pick out of. Talk to them. Get the tech specs. Get any historical data. Do your own product research. Very important. Instead of going home and playing Warcraft, get on the net. This product is great. This product is great. I hate this product. Mine the data of the internet. You will find people who say, we bought this system and it's horrible, it's crap. We bought it and we loved it. Do your own research. Get details of all aspects, warranty, service, training, make sure it's all there. And beware of upselling. Well, you can have a card reader, but I can give you a card reader with a keypad on it. It's only an extra 50 bucks and you're buying 300 of them. You just paid for his vacation. Do you need a keypad? No, well, but, 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 not, no. How many of you have heard that phrase? Would you like an apple pie with that? How many times do you say no? Damn near every time. Use the same logic. Don't be afraid to revise your RFQ. Don't be afraid to read it. Vendors will adhere to your RFQ religiously. If you say 50 feet, and then the RFQ says five feet, you'll get five feet of cable. What is on the paper is what counts. Keep all paperwork, all quotes, and every revision of your RFQ. Number them. RFQ 1.0, 1.2, 1.3. And then when they come back and say, well, according to my paperwork, you never asked for that. And you go, oh, no, look. Version 1.2 said five feet, but version 1.3 said 50. And that was the latest one. This is where vendors will get tricky on you, so keep your paperwork handy. Prioritize your needs, balance between budget and functionality. You should know that by now. Look for hidden costs. Well, here's a device. I'll sell it to you for 100 bucks. It's a card printer. It prints your ID cards, $100. They don't tell you that the replacement ink cartridges are $300 a piece. They don't tell you that the cards are about a buck fifty a piece. Hidden costs that you get later. If you work with multiple vendors, make sure all the equipment interoperates correctly. It never does. I sell you product X, here's product Y. Well, if you, 
if you run an RS-232 cable between the two of them and you set up terminal the right way, you can make them pass data between, no, no. Interoperability should be easy, built in. You should never have to ramshackle anything. If there is subcontracting, vet your subcontractors. Make sure they know what the hell they're doing. Notice the capacitor up there. I know it's hard to read. The one on the left says 6,900 microfarads. So does the one on the right. But when you crack it open, 2,200 microfarad soldered inside and made to look like the same product. This will happen to you. And if you don't know what the Jarvis 2000 is, go home tonight, look it up online, and you'll be glad I didn't tell you here. Support contracts are very important. Who's had to deal with a support contract? Okay, you pay a lot of money for those support contracts, don't you? Do you get anything out of them? If I get a 24 by 7 support contract that I'm paying $30,000 for, I'm sorry, I don't want to be outsourced to India. I don't want to be outsourced to Pakistan. I don't want to be outsourced to anywhere. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I want someone who says we'll be there in 30 minutes. We'll replace your system. We'll replace the part. You do not want somebody who is just sitting there reading a book. Click on the blue button. What did it do? What do you mean the screen turned blue? Well, turn your computer off and on again. You don't want to deal with that. Do you know what happens when you pay $30,000 for a support contract and they outsource it? Do you know what happens? You get this. You've got a beautiful support infrastructure, but you've got people who are sitting there reading a procedure book. They don't know the equipment. They can't help you. Make sure that when you buy a support contract, you're actually getting support. Vendors will play on your heartstrings. Oh, I really need this. I had a vendor tell me he needed this because he was going to lose his house. You've got to buy from me or else I'm going to lose my business. There are no honorable bargains involving exchange of qualitative merchandise like souls. They will try to get you to sell your soul. Don't do it. Quantitative merchandise like time and money. Those are the two resources you have and you have precious little of both. Words of advice for young people from William Burroughs. Next, the people who think they know more than you do. Everyone's got one of these in their office, don't they? They usually don't know more than you do. They make you look good and they annoy the management, but they never shut up. Everyone's a rock star at home. I went home and read up all about this last night on Wikipedia. I know more than this guy does. Let, let me design the security system. No. This was said to me one day when the alarms were going off in the server room and it's 105 degrees up there. I'm opening the doors, bringing in fans, AC is broken. CEO comes in and says, well, you know, I went to MIT. So I know a little something about this. Let me explain. The temperature sensor, as he pointed to the sprinkler on the ceiling, it's 105 degrees up there because heat rises. Down here where the computers are, it's nowhere near that. It's not a big deal. 20 minutes later, every machine thermal shut down. He stopped me from doing the work on the system. Then he came screaming, oh my God, everything's down. Guess what I told him? Know the difference between facts and water cooler talk. Well, you know, I read in Wired magazine. Well, that says enough right there. You know your business. So you know what you need to do. If they play the brownie point game, don't get involved. If they play politics, don't get involved. If they cite AM talk radio, run. <laughs> cut sheets are your friend. Look at your cut sheets. Don't rely on things like, well, my friend's cousin's brother works at the magazine and he read a copy of it on the loading dock. No. Cut sheets and facts. Don't play buzzword bingo. Don't be Jar Jar. Know what you're doing. Know what you're saying. Let them kiss ass while you kick ass because you know what you're doing. What about biometrics? Oh, biometric three-phase multi-home active authentication is the best. Your first reaction is to say, I don't want to listen to this. You're a terminal fool. The management says, excuse me, 
boom, your whole argument just went up in flames. 